This is my seventh video lesson for Unit 6B. In this lesson, we'll learn how to determine percent composition. Motivation. Air consists of oxygen, nitrogen, and argon. If in a room, I have 42 grams of oxygen, 156 grams of nitrogen, and 2 grams of argon, what percentage of the air is nitrogen? So the first step is to figure out the mass of air. To do that, you're going to add up the mass of oxygen, nitrogen, and argon. Then divide the mass of nitrogen over the mass of air times 100 will give you the percent composition of nitrogen in air. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to calculate the percent composition and I'll be able to determine the empirical and molecular formula given the percent composition. Work number seven will be a junipod based off this lesson. There will be a quiz junipod on PowerPoint 5, 6, and 7. In chemistry, percent composition is the percent by mass of each element in a compound. The equation can be found on table T in your reference table. Percent composition by mass is equal to the mass of part over the mass of whole times 100. If you were to add up all the parts percentages, it should be 100%. In the first scenario, we'll be finding the percent composition of each element. Question 1. What is the percent composition by mass of carbon in carbon monoxide? The first step is to look up the percent composition equation on table T. Then we figure out the part and the whole. The whole will be CO and the part will be carbon. Next, we figure out the GFM of CO and C. CO is 28 grams per mole and C is 12 grams per mole. Next, we plug into the equation. 12 over 28 times 100% is 42.9%. That is the percent composition of carbon in CO. One might be the percent composition of oxygen. So the sum of the percent composition of the parts, which is carbon oxygen, should be 100%. So 100 minus 42.9 is 57.1%. And that would be the percent composition of oxygen. Learning check number one. What is the percent composition by mass of hydrogen in NH4HCO3? Pause the video and resume once completed. So the answer is choice two, 6.3%. Learning check number two, which compound has the highest percent composition by mass of strontium? Pause the video and resume once completed. So you have to calculate the percent composition of strontium in each compound. If you do that, the one that has the highest is choice two. Learning check number three, what is the percent solute by mass for a solution containing 100 grams of NaCl and 200 grams of water? Pause the video and resume once completed. So the first step is to figure out the mass of whole. So the mass of whole will be the mass of solute plus the mass of the solvent. The mass of solute is 100 grams of NaCl. The mass of solvent is 200 grams of water. So the sum will be 300 grams, and that will be the mass of whole, the mass of the solution. So the percent composition of the solute will be 100 grams over 300 grams times 100%, and that will be 33%, choice one. Now I want you to try to do questions two to five on your own. Pause the video and resume once completed. So here's the answers. In scenario B, we'll be calculating the percent composition of water of a hydrate. In question 6, calculate the percent composition by mass of water in the compound calcium sulfate hexahydrate. The first step is to look up the equation on table T. Then you must figure out the mass of whole and the mass of part. Based off the question, the mass of whole is the hydrate, which is 244 grams per mole. The next step is to figure out the mass of part, which is the mass of water in the hydrate. So how do we do that? So in the hydrate, we have six water molecules. Each water molecule have a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. So 6 times 18 is 108 grams per mole, and that is the mass of part. Next, we plug into the equation. 108 over 244 times 100% gives us 44.3%. And that is the percent composition of water in the hydrate. Learning check number four, what is the percent composition by mass of water in the compound 
copper to sulfate pentahydrate. Pause the video and resume once completed. So the answer is 36%. Now I want you to try to do questions 7 to 11 on your own. Pause the video and resume once completed. So here's the answers. In the next part of the lesson, we'll be figuring out the molecular formula given the empirical formula and the molar mass. In question 2a, a compound has an empirical formula of C2O and a gram formula mass of 60 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula of this compound? The first step is to figure out the GFM of the empirical formula, which is 30 grams per mole. The next step is to figure out the ratio between the GFM of the empirical and molecular formula which is one to two. So the molecular formula is double of the empirical formula. So the molecular formula is C2H4O2. This molecular formula should have a GFM of 60 grams per mole. Learning check number five. What is the molecular formula of a compound that has a molecular mass of 54 and empirical formula of C2H3? Pause the video and resume once completed. So the answer is choice two. The first step is to figure out the GFM of the empirical formula, which is 27. 27 is half of 54. Therefore, you double the empirical formula to get the molecular formula. Learning check number six. If the empirical formula for organic compound is CH2O, then the molecular mass of the compound could be what? Pause the video and resume once completed. So the first step is to figure out the GFM of CH2O which is 30 grams per mole. Next, you look for a multiple of 30. So based off the answer choices, that would be choice 2, 60. Because 60 is a multiple of 30. Now I want you to try to do 2B to 2E on your own. Pause the video and resume when it's completed. So here's the answers. For the last part of the lesson, we'll be figuring out the empirical formula given the percent composition. So this is the opposite of figuring out the percent composition given the formula. Let's look at question 3a. What is the empirical formula of a compound that contains 30.4% of nitrogen and 69.6% .6 of oxygen by mass? So these are the percent compositions of each element in the compound. The procedure on how to do this is found on page 26 in my class packet. The first step is to convert all the percentage to mass. So we have 30.4 grams of nitrogen and 69.6 .6 grams of oxygen. If you were to add them up, they should add up to 100 grams. The next step is to convert the masses of each element to moles. To do that, we divide it by the GFM of the element. So 30.4 grams divided by 14 should give us 2.14 moles of nitrogen. For oxygen, we can divide by the GFM of oxygen. So 69.6 .6 grams of oxygen divided by 16 gives us 4.35 moles of oxygen. So the ratio between nitrogen and oxygen in the empirical formula is 2.14 to 4.35. Since subscripts cannot be decimals, we have to convert this to a whole number ratio. We're going to divide it by the smallest number, which is 2.14. So if we divide both numbers by 2.14 we get 1 to 2, so the empirical formula is NO2. Learning check number 7, a compound consists of 25.9% of nitrogen and 74.1% of oxygen by mass. What is the empirical formula of this compound? Pause the video and resume once completed. So the answer is choice 4, N2O5. So the first step is to convert all the percent composition to mass. They should add up to 100 grams. So next we convert the mass of each element to moles. 25.9 grams of nitrogen divided by the GFM gives us 1.85 moles of nitrogen. For oxygen, we divide it by the GFM of oxygen. And that should give us 4.63 moles of oxygen. So the ratio between nitrogen and oxygen is 1.85 to 4.63. To convert it to a whole number ratio, we divide it by the smallest number, which is 1.85.
and we get 1 to 2.5. 1 to 2.5 is the same as 2 to 5 if you double it. So the empirical formula is N2O5. Now I want you to try to do the rest of the problems on your own. Pause the video and resume once completed. So here are the answers. So this concludes the video lesson for today. Remember to do the Juniper homework and quiz.